our pro player insiders were on the phone with TJ, the boss, for number 43. TJ is a safety for the Browns. TJ, you're Cali grown. You're from the U of O. You're a duck, man. People probably know you as one of the Browns' top picks, the top pick in 2010. You've been balling ever since. I actually... I don't know if I follow you on Twitter, but I checked you out at Boss Ford 43 And from what I gained on Twitter, TJ, you have style, you have a little swag, and you have a lot of humor. So I'm excited to be on the phone with you. I try to keep things humorous and lighthearted, try to keep fans engaged and, you know, what's going on. I'm not one of those every-minute type Twitter people, you know, have to let you know what's like, going on every second, but... Is there definitely something going on or something, you know, festive or anything going on like that in my life? Or, for for example, the playoffs going on. You know, I'm going to chime in and, you know, chime in, see what my fans are doing and just talk with the people a little bit. So you've been watching the playoffs. What team or player are you secretly rooting for? You know what? Being from San Francisco, I have to say I'm going for the Niners. And I'm hoping they get to the Super Bowl and do their thing. i got a couple of friends on the team, so... Definitely hope they they're successful. Um, other than that, really no one else. Um, I'm not too big of a Ravens fan or a Patriots fan, even though I have a couple of friends on the Patriots too. But um, no, just hometown team. So my second favorite team in the league is besides the Browns, is definitely the Forty ers You're a Bay Area dude that went to U of O. I actually went to Oregon State, TJ, and I have oh. to say that <laughs> Benny the Beaver is okay. way cooler than your Donald Duck character. Although you kicked yeah. your butts in the Civil War. No, not when I was there. But my brother goes to Oregon State, so it's all good. He's actually oh, a he does. right now. Yeah. He, he is. Right I'll set him up. Yeah, I'll have to hit your brother up. I'm <laughs> a, I bleed orange, but not Syracuse orange. So you went to Oregon. Are there any uh, ducks that you watched this season playing for Oregon? Yeah, you, I definitely watched every game that came on TV. You know, DeAnthony Thomas, he's had a great year. He's one of those impact players. Um, Mariota, the quarterback, he's going to be really good. You know, he, he had a breakout season this year. Um, Kiko Alonso, the linebacker, you know, I played with most of the seniors when they were freshmen there. So it's it's good uh-huh. to see them grow up and become the leaders of the team and, you know, you know, kind of see how they develop throughout their careers. So, But uh, the seniors on the team right now are the last of the guys that I've played with and I know. So um, it's good to see them get ready for the draft and, kind of be able to give them pointers and talk to them a little bit, try to help them out on, you know, the, the, the path ahead of them. So if I run into any covering the draft, who should I give the most crap to? <laughs> uh, let's see. Six, six you no, know, my man, John Boyer, he got hurt, um, but he's definitely a great safety. You know, Oregon, we produce, you know, great DBs. You know, Coach Neal, he does a great job with the secondary up there, and Coach Alioti is a defense coordinator. But definitely John Boyer, you know, he was having a, a wonderful career before he went down this year. Um, Kiko Alonso, the linebacker, I think he's highly underrated, but he's one of the most athletic and um, football-savvy guys, you know, I've played with. Um, who else is coming out this year? Oh, Deion Jordan. He's, I think he may be you know, the highest out of all the guys at the end. Um, he may be a first-round pick this year. Um, he actually started off at the tight end and moved to defense, and um, he's a, he's a talent, you know, like none other. One of the most athletic guys I've ever came across. But those three guys, I think, are going to lead the draft class for the Ducks this year. So oh, and Keon Barner, the running here. back. Yeah, he's a, he's he's really good. So now nah, I'm excited to see where these guys go in the draft this year. Not only does Oregon produce a lot of DBs, but you guys have been spoiled with Nike gear. Now the NFL is all about Nike. What was your favorite part about repping the Nike gear when you played? Um, Just that, repping the Nike gear. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it seems like every time, wherever you go to school, it just seems like the next class gets a little bit better with the gear and everything. So now and they got slightly the jealous, travel yeah. shoes and you know, all the Darrell Reavers travel shoes and all these crazy travel jumpsuits and bags and hats and everything. Like, don't get me wrong, we had it good when I went there, but, you know, it's always a little bit better the next year. But just just having all the Nike stuff, the uniforms, I think was my favorite part, never wearing the same uniform twice. 
having three, four different helmets, coming in the locker room, not knowing what jersey is going to be in front of your locker. So things like that was always exciting and always kept us on our toes. Is there an Oregon um, player in the league right now that you keep in touch with and you text during the game? Yeah, I keep in okay. contact with mostly all my DBs, Pat DB, Chung, right? Darius Burger, yeah, Walter Thurman. Not so much Ed Dixon because he's a Raven, so I really don't talk to him that much anymore. <laughs> no, but uh, – Mostly just the DBs. Um, Eddie Pleasant, he was a couple years after me, but he was with the Texans right now. I talk to him a lot. So uh, a lot of my DBs, we, we were a close group when we were at Oregon, and we still keep in contact now. Yeah, D-Boys, that's who we went by the D-Boys. D-Boys, yeah. yeah. So yeah. you're a D-Boy, but you're also a boss. What is this? How did you get the nickname Boss? I got that in college. It actually started with the, this video game. We used to play Rainbow Six all the time. Kind of just led over to the field, and then you know people just start calling me Boss. Like my friends, like around campus and stuff, and it just stuck. And I've been riding with it ever since. Not so much like around the streets. People call me Boss now, but like it was like literally <laughs> Boss. Like they didn't even call me TJ. <laughs> um, I also found out. Tell me if this is wrong. Your cousin is Maurice Jones Drew. Do you guys grow yeah. up together? Yeah, we grew up um we grew up in Antioch. I mean, we've been playing together since we were, I was eight and he was ten and we played for the same pop one the team, went to the same high school. We both played in the pack ten. Yeah, so we kinda of traveled the same road, except he's on offense and I'm on defense. <laughs> we both went second <laughs> round. You know, I feel we were both underrated coming through the draft. So I think we've dealt with a lot of the same issues, and it just happens to be that we're related. That's crazy. Do you have, like, an embarrassing, you got to tell me, DJ, funny story about him growing up? I guess, <laughs> there's so many <laughs> stories, but it was more embarrassing for me because the first hit I took actually was from him. And, Your you first know, I was eight, hit? You know, yeah, man, he knocked me silly. And it was my first year playing. He had been playing for like two, three years. You know, he was older, bigger than me. I knocked the wind out of me, and I started crying. You know, I'm eight years old. <laughs> so I was like, okay. So ever since then, you know, I've been aiming to get him back. We played um, my rookie year. We played Jacksonville. I actually missed the game when we played him last year. But we played Jacksonville my rookie year, and all I could think about was that hit. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, I'm going to get you back. So we met a couple of times on the sideline. I think I got the best, the best of them one time. But, you know, things you like did. that you grow up wishing, you know, and dreaming about, and we were actually on the field at the same time. And, you know, if that is just you work so hard, and those are the moments you work hard and you realize that you kind of got in there, but there's still a lot of work to be done there. It was just a great feeling just for, to, for both of us to be out there playing against each other. Your first wow memory of getting hit was when you were eight and your cousin smoked you. Yeah. And you cried. That's of, awesome. You I just had an idea. You should do a YouTube video on that, seeing how you like to do the YouTube video acting. you got to do mm -hmm. a little skit with your cousin. He's very, like, in the media. He has his own radio show and all that stuff, and I'm sure you've seen him on ESPN, so he's he has a lot of character. <laughs> <laughs> He was probably so one of the you, guys I know, though. So I saw your, which is very frustrating, but I saw that you did a, a little acting piece. You're into acting, TJ. You did a marketing video for the Pro Bowl. After mm -hmm. watching the video, I agree with Peter King. You you would be on my all-pro team, dude, hopefully 2014. What was the, the thought process behind that YouTube video for the Pro Bowl? My, we just decided to do something that, you know, kind of spark some interest and get things going. Came across this idea to make the video. You know, I think it was a good idea. It was, it was funny. It was hilarious shooting it. And I kind of didn't realize how many takes it took to, to make a short video like that. But, you know, even though it was kind of quick, it was still, you know, a lot involved. But um, I think it turned out turned out really good. What did you think? I liked it. I, I, was, like, I was like, Peter King, you're on. I think Ward should have been all pro. But next year, you're going to have to do a volume two. And then 2015, yeah, I'm definitely, I, oh, I got to leave no doubts next year. Uh, I'm going to work really hard this off season, and You know, that's what it comes down to, leaving no doubt where, you know, they can't even can't even debate. It's just like clear cut. So, you know, that's my goal for next year, just make it clear cut. So your season ended and you were injured, which could have played into not making the Pro Bowl. How is your foot doing? You know, it was actually my knee this year. I got a bone. Oh, whoops. Well, no, you're right. I did hurt my foot last year. I hurt my foot last oh, okay. year. This year I missed two games with a, a, a 
bone bruise in my knee, but it's all good and healthy right now. So no setbacks. I'm just ready to take a little time off and then get back to work and get ready for this next season. My fourth year, contract year, is up after next season. So definitely looking forward to having my best season. So you got to play. I had the honor to meet um, Brandon Whedon and Trent Richardson at the draft. Um, These guys are really coming through for the dog pound. Give me one word or a sentence to describe Brandon Whedon and his presence on the ground. One word? I said a word, but it never works out like that. Yeah, cool. Brandon, is he's a really cool dude, you know, on and off the field. Um, he never really seems too flustered. You never see him throwing temper challenges on the sideline or anything like that. He's always looking forward to, to making the next play. So I definitely have to describe Brandon as cool. What about Trent Richardson? Trent, I would just say explosive. Like, he's one of the yes. strongest yes. dudes I've ever played against or had to play against in practice. Just, it was one instance where I went to wrap him up. You know, we don't tackle in practice, but, you know, we made contact and I wrapped him up, and I was like, that's when I realized how strong he was. I'm like, yeah, this guy's strong. He's going to be good. So definitely explosive. You know, he wants to win. That's the thing about all these young guys on our team. You know, we're so hungry to win. Um, thirsty, we're working yeah. really hard, and you can just see the difference from, you know, when I first got here and now. Like, we just got a team of young, hungry guys that, you know, we're ready to win. And, you know, I think we're going to work. I know we're going to do it this next week, coming up season. And, um, yeah, it's it's really, you know, exciting because we're all anticipating. We know we, we can explode at any time, and then we're going to do it next year. The Browns are 5-11. and 11. You guys are fourth in the AFC. You guys have new coaching staff coming in, hopefully. I read Chip Kelly from Oregon has interviewed. What are your thoughts on the coaches, and what will you look for in a new coach? Well, yeah, he interviewed him, and, you know, I was really hoping to get you, you know, just playing for him at Oregon. Um, mm-hmm. He's a really good coach. I think he could have done a great job here, but we ended up hiring Shredzinski. Um, I forget his first name. I think it's like Mark or something. Um, he came from uh, the Panthers. He came from Carolina. And I've heard really good okay. things about him, you know, from other players. He hasn't put his staff together yet, so I really don't know what's going to happen on the defensive side of the ball, who our coordinator is going to be yet. But, you know, Mr. Haslam and Mr. Banner, I um, have complete trust in what they're doing. And, I, you know, I know they know what they're doing and they hired the right guy for the job. So I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing all the pieces come together and, Get ready to work it on having a great 2013 season. What are your off-season plans or trips? And are you going to spend most of your time in the Bay Area? Yeah, I'm going to spend most of my time in the Bay Area. Joe Hayden, he's getting married this year in Miami, so I'm going to go down there for his wedding. Maybe some spur of the moment trips, but most of my focus is going to be on training this off-season. And your trainer is all set up in San Francisco? Yeah, I'll be in the Bay Area training at um, California Strength, where I train for the Combine. So they got me right before they didn't let me down, so I'm going to go back there and get right. Good luck to you yeah. this off season in the Bay Area, sure. working out, get it right. And hopefully, will I see you at the Super Bowl? Maybe. I'm trying to decide right now. If the Niners go, you'll definitely I'll be there. But um, if not, probably not. <laughs> <laughs> you enjoy your off season, TJ, and thank you so much. We'll keep in touch. All right, you too. Take care. Bye.